Hello and welcome to my morning note. Markets are somewhat calm so far this morning. Everybody is waiting for the EU summit, which starts later today. and We'll be having a live blog on that on FT.com. But there's also, obviously, great anticipation for the uh, European soccer championships coming to their conclusion at the moment, where, with delicious irony, if Germany are to win, as many people expect that they will, they will need to beat, in succession, Greece, Italy and Spain, the countries that are giving the Eurozone their great headache at present. More broadly, though, beyond what actually happens in, amid the summitry, there has to be a question specifically about Spain and whether it can really negotiate the next six months without a sovereign bailout. It's very difficult to see how they can do that, and I'm hoping my guest today can help answer this question. He's the chief European economist at Capital Economics, Jonathan Loins. Jonathan, thank you very much for being here today. Let's have a quick look first at where yields have reached for both Spain uh, and Italy. This doesn't imply very great confidence about uh, Spain's ability to get through this without help, does it? No, we've seen a, a steady upward trend in uh, the Spanish government's borrowing costs really since the start of the year with a few ups and downs uh, as sentiment has sort of ebbed and flowed a little bit. But essentially, uh, yields are very close to critical levels now. We had Prime Minister Rajoy saying mm. uh, just yesterday, I think, that Spain couldn't carry on financing itself at these sorts of interest rates for very much longer. Uh, so certainly, I think if we see a further move towards the 7% level, which has proved to be fairly critical yes. for bailout countries in the past, that will increase the likelihood that Spain will need a full-blown sovereign bailout. OK, now so far we've had uh, an organisation of a bailout for the banks alone. And as we can show you with the next chart, uh, that may not necessarily be a meaningful division, particularly in the case of Spain, because uh, Spain's banks and sovereign are particularly closely interlinked. How did this happen? Yes, well this chart shows that um, Spanish banks own an unusually high proportion of uh, domestic government debt relative to mm. uh, other Eurozone countries. You can see getting towards 40% there. So that's prompted growing concerns about the mm. interdependence between the government and the banks. Um, and as you say, although there is now a, a banking support, a support package, uh, package in train, uh, one concern is that that's actually going to boost the ratio of public debt to GDP by another 10% or so. So I think, if anything, that is going to increase concerns about uh, the sovereign's fiscal position. And on the subject of the sovereign's fiscal position, let's take a look at Capital Economics' own estimates. So we can see the official estimates in the, the blue line show, uh, show the fiscal deficit getting back below the Maastricht target by the end of next year. Uh, why, don't you why don't you agree? What, 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 is the, what is the problem here? Well, several reasons. Um, first of all, we think that the growth forecasts upon which these official budget uh, deficit projections are based are probably too optimistic. So they actually envisage, after a contraction in 2012, a return to positive growth in 2013. Uh, we think that looks unlikely against the background of continued austerity, uh, mm. high borrowing costs and, and general weakness uh, in the Eurozone as a whole. Um, but it's also worth remembering that Spain missed its budget deficit target by about 3% of GDP in 2011, okay. even though the right. economy actually wasn't that much weaker than they anticipated. So there's some clear structural factors there as well. OK, so that generally implies that if not within the next six months, certainly within the next two years, something is going to have to give. We do have this summit going on. What are the kind of sticking plaster measures that could avert a, a full-blown sovereign bailout within the next matter of months? Well, I don't think any of the long-term measures that have been talked about uh, at this summit are really going to help Spain. It doesn't really matter what happens in terms of the steps towards banking union over the next decade or so. Mm. What Spain needs are short-term uh, measures, and, and in particular, uh, probably massive bond purchases, either by the European Central Bank um, or by mm. the bailout fund, the EFSF, or its, its replacement, the ESM. Mm. Um, now, it may be that we see some of that, although Germany is, is opposed, I think, um, quite strongly to those sorts of measures. But even if we do, there are question marks over whether there's enough money there. Uh, if the bond purchases come from the ESM, they'll have preferred creditor status. So there'll be a worry about seniority amongst private sector right. debt holders. So uh, even that, I suspect, is not going to prevent Spain from having to receive a full-blown sovereign bailout over the next three to six months. OK, Jonathan, thank you very much indeed. Not a positive account, but an accurate one. Spain may yet, of course, win the European Soccer Championships. Uh, and the summit may yet come up with some l positive long-term proposals, but we still have a very big problem to deal with in the next six months, which is how to deal with Spain's sovereign debt.